My name is Darren Fisher. I'm the Member of Parliament currently for the riding, the incredible riding of Dartmouth Coal Harbour in Nova Scotia, and I'm a member, a proud member of the Liberal Party of Canada. So going back before I was an MP, I was a member of Halifax Regional Council, came in in 2009. If you'd asked me in 2000 and if you'd asked me in 1999, I would have told you, you're crazy, I would never do this. But once I had children, uh, I started getting involved more in the community. I, I looked to see which school they were going to go. I looked at what type of playground they had. And I thought about those things and I started going to public meetings. I started joining PTA groups and things like that. And as I got uh, more and more involved in the community, people started suggesting that I should consider uh, running for the local council seat. And I think I even said, then you're crazy. There's not a chance I would ever do that. Uh, but I, I was convinced to do it, and I, right up until election day, I didn't think I would be successful. And here I am now, five or six elections later, uh, as a member of parliament in Dartmouth Coal Harbour. And again, uh, I think it has to be kind of organic. It's not somebody that groom, is groomed to be in politics. I think we need every aspect of Canadian life representing Canadians in the House of Commons or on local regional councils. First of all, I'm proud of an awful lot of little things. I'm proud of individual things and, and funds that have been brought into the community to build certain infrastructure projects or to help a certain group, whether it be Boys or Girls Club. But the one I keep coming back to when I'm asked, when this is all over, what will you remember? It will be the Canada Child Benefit. It's taking that envelope of money that the former government gave out as well, but dividing it up based on need income tested. The people that I know that don't need the money that we're getting it anyway, in a rare instance I was I was hearing from them and they were saying um, we're okay not getting that if it's going to families that need it more and to children that need it more and if if I'm uh, you know retired from politics I'll look back at that as quite possibly the, the most generational now, you could say that uh, child care, $10 a day child care, will be on par with that when it becomes part of our, you know, our society and we see it as a regular thing. I remember when my wife and I had two kids in daycare overlapped for probably two years, and uh, it was an incredible strain on us. We lived off credit cards when we were younger with children, and this will take that pressure off families. And, you know, you think about the affordability issues we have in our country and in the, around the world right now, anytime we can help. Uh, but this is something that's going to make an impact on people uh, for years to come. What motivates me to go, <laughs> what motivates me to get up out of bed? Um, I love this job. I, I do. You know, many people will say, I wouldn't do this for a million bucks. And a lot of times you think about what we're doing as politicians. We are taking what's important to others and shining a light on it and trying to solve those issues. Where, where most people um, think about what interests them or what's important to them or what's impacting them. And we're completely the opposite in politics. We're out there to solve the problems that may not be impacting us personally, but we see the importance of those to Canadians. And uh, that is enough uh, to drive me uh, to get up every day and, and go do this work. Federally, becoming an MP, I, I'd always heard stories about how, you know, skip question period. Nothing good comes out of question period. It's just theater, and it is. There's really nothing good out of question period. But I'd always been told by former MPs that you really could work across party lines. Um, I've found that to be less the case. I have instances where I have worked across party lines and occasionally I will get up and leave my seat during house duty and walk over and sit down with a, a you know, a Bloc Quebecois or an NDP or a Conservative or a Green Party uh, member. But I think jumping into the party politics world uh, showed me very quickly that it's much more difficult. You could have someone that you could sit down side by side and agree totally on a policy plan just knowing that they're not going to be able to vote for it because it's party politics and the opposition won't support the government. 
you know, and you can look back in time and we probably did the same things. We wouldn't support the government because we were opposition. If we can get away from that, if we can sit these folks in a room and just say, throw everything out the door. We want to do what's best for Canadians. How do we get there? And I'm disappointed that that's not, um, that's not as possible as I'd hoped it would be. One of the things I thought I could change about politics was, I'm just a regular Joe who's friends with everybody, and I thought I could come in. And I think I did to some extent. You know, make friends on all the other sides and, and have some common ground, but the party politics machine is stronger than those individual connections that you can make across the aisle. I had a uh, private member's bill. I've passed two private member's bill in my first term, which was at the time I was the only person ever to do two PMBs in the first term. That has since been matched by John Aldag since. However, uh, in order to get the support for a bill that I was doing on um, keeping light bulbs that contain mercury out of landfills, I started with it when I was municipal and I worked towards it when I was federal. It's really difficult because there's provincial, municipal, and federal jurisdictions all within what I wanted to accomplish. But in order to get that passed, I had to have the conservative support. And I worked with the conservative environment critic, and his name is Ed Fast. And I will always have time for Ed Fast. He was uh, straightforward, he was honest, uh, and he was so good to work with. And he told me the parts of the bill that were going to be difficult for them to support, or also made suggestions to make the bill better. And it's one of my greatest experiences in Parliament uh, is working with, uh, working with that party through Ed. Trying to encourage women to run in this state of politics has always been a challenge, but now it's becoming a challenge to encourage men to run as well. And you know, when there is so much hate, anger, angst in politics, there was a time that, you know, you'd, you'd gather with all your friends and you'd have dinner and you wouldn't even know what their politics were. That's not possible now because all the conversations revolve around what's happening in politics. And it's always from a, an angle of anger and frustration. And, you know, we're going through some tough times. We're going through times uh, where there's a real affordability issue right now. But we have to... Um, we have to get past that and be able to see someone else's, um, someone else's perspective rather than just think that we're right, they're wrong, or they're wrong, we're right. You know, we're not going in a positive direction in, a, in, in our democracy when we are seeing women MPs uh, getting death threats on a regular basis. When the RCMP detail has to follow a, a female minister, when someone's... Um, constituency offices set on fire or, you know, spray painted with some of the worst words you've ever seen. We are in trouble in our democracy and we need to get it back. You know, I said I got into politics uh, shortly after my kids were born, when my kids were getting ready to go to school. Um, young people? Again, this can go back to our last question about finding ways to encourage people to look past the anger, the hate, and the frustration, and the angst, and, and push them and encourage them and tell them that our world needs them. Because, you know, I'm 57. I'm not suggesting I want to stop this crazy world I'm, on, I'm in right now, but I want to be replaced by a young person. I want to be replaced. We have these youth councils, and the incredible young people that are on these councils. I had a chat with a gentleman the other day who said to me, um, my daughter worked on your campaign in 2015. I said, oh my God, who's that? And he told me her name. <gasps> she's incredible. She was 19 then, now she's 26. She's got two or three degrees. The future's really bright. Our young people are gonna take over and I can't wait to watch it. So I have a, my, uh, a 16 year old myself. She's 19 now, but she's exactly like me in almost every way, in fact, so hers says like father, mine says like daughter. The advice that I give her is the advice that I wish I had give, uh, I'd taken myself. 
Get involved in your community. Don't worry about how young you are. Volunteer somewhere. Go to the Boys and Girls Club. Go to a, just get involved. I waited until my kids were born before I really truly got involved in my community and I missed out on so much. There were so many things I could have done or could have contributed to. She has so much to offer, just like all our youth. If I could go back and give myself a piece of advice at 16, I would say get more involved in your community now. Don't wait till later.